Well, here we are on the edge of Chignall Smeley, um, a village just outside Chelmsford, and um, this is the view I'm looking at. Um, it's got everything really. Um, it has um, everything um, the artist would look for really. Um, the lovely old tree which um, stands as the main focal point. We've got the, um, the ditch, a little bit of water in there, a little bit of reflection. We've got the sun coming from the left, casting a shadow across the road as it turns. Um, and to the right of the scene, you've got this um, fir tree that really holds that right hand side in. I'm not going to put my car in. Um, and um, so uh, let's uh, get painting. Well, a lot of people say to me, um, you never show us how you sketch the scene. Well, that's what I'm going to do this morning. Show you exactly how I sketch the scene in the first place. While well, I establish where the road turns, because that's vital. I don't want to show too much. I, I want to make quite a lot of the tree, so the tree's got to be a dominant feature. Um, but I want to show the turn in the road and get that perspective correct. And it turns very, very quickly and then comes towards me and to the right of me. Uh, as it turns the corner, it slips away behind a hedge. Um, then we've got a bit of a bank showing. And then we get fairly narrow there. And then we widen as we come into the foreground. So you've got a lovely feeling of tapering of that road as it turns. We're obviously going to have um, the, the holding tree that side, stop the eye running away. But beyond this, we've got an area where that tree stands. Uh, it's the edge of the, of the road, really. And then we have the ditch. Um, so let's put the tree in first, so we get that well established. And the tree, uh, it's an old oak, lovely features. Got to try and draw in, um, you know, certain shapes of the uh, tree that will give us an indication that it is that particular tree. Um, not always um, uh, vital, but uh, in this case, I think we should. Um, and then we have the main trunk that heads off up. Uh, these branches, it's an old tree, so the branches have got a little bit of width to them. Um, the trunk then heads off up. This, this branch comes away there, but there is another one that comes away there like that. Not going to put them all in, purely because the more you put in, the more complicated the whole tree becomes and we want to keep it we, we need a bit of simplification there is one that comes towards us like that so that sits away in the front of the of the trunk and then the main trunk goes up again we have other areas coming off of that and then we have the main area heading off like that then it splits again there and that's where the trunk begins to narrow considerably. But I'm going to take that right over picture. Um, then we do have, uh, I think you can see that okay. Um, then we do have, um, what have we got? We've got that one coming away. Then at the back of the tree, so that comes from the back, we have another large branch coming away there. We have another split of branching there that overlaps. There we are. See the way of, of some go from side to side, some come away from the centre, that one in particular. This one comes from the back, so you can see the edge of that trunk. This one uh, comes from the front, again, so you can see the edge of that. Uh, but this one comes out of the side. And then we have another fairly large branch there 
and give them a bit, notice how I'm giving them a bit of movement. Okay, now we can start putting in the smaller branches um, that um, will be um, extremely uh, important when we come to paint. I'm only just um, um, really, just got to watch because my materials are blowing away, a little bit on, a, on the windy side today. Um, uh, just got to watch that we don't add too many. Um, but uh, okay, so that one goes away and splits again. We have another branch that heads down there, another one up there. Well, I've got to complete this one because it's it's quite an important one. It's slightly wider. It's coming out from there, um, and we will have a few small little sap branches coming off the base. But overall, that's all we need. Uh, sits in the grass like that. We've got a bit of hedging. I like to put that in. It helps blend the tree into the ground. A bit of hedging in front there. Like that. Um, and then of course the distance, that um, that heads away. Um, we've got a field that we can see. Let's, let's just put in this conifer. I'll just imitate common conifers uh, when I'm uh, drawing as those sorts of spiky areas. Then we have a bit of hedging and this put in very simply with a little bit of branches from the hedging without leaving there. That's good. Just tighten that down because the wind is rather strong again. Um, okay then we have the distant field it runs straight across this field actually heads behind there and strokes away like that. Then we have some distant fields that will be blown away nicely. And then the bank. And I'm showing the ditch by these markings that head down like that. Because that way we can see the contour of the land. And then you've got pond there. So it's all about the marks you make that give height to the bank. Same here, a bit of height to the bank, a bit of turn to the bank there, a bit of turn to the bank there. And that's all you need to draw this particular subject onto your watercolour paper.